Malayan Flower Mills Berhad or MFM was founded by the late Datuk David L.F. Song in 1961. In May 1976, the late Mr. Teh Liang Teh acquired the controlling interest in MFM from the Song family. After serving MFM Group for 26 years, the late Mr. Teh Liang Teh retired in April 2002 and was succeeded by his son, Mr. Teh Wee Chai, and the company was running under his leadership till this day. The company is in the flower miling and poultry industry, and the company is principally involved in three business segments. The flower miling industry, where they sell different kinds of wheat flour, the poultry integration business, as well as the aqua business. The countries that the company have presence are Malaysia, British Virgin Island and Vietnam. For more information, you can visit their website at www.mfm.com.my. If you're liking the content so far, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and also feel free to comment on what company should I analyze and I may post it in my upcoming video. Hey guys, this is John from Pokaida Bro, but now known as Non and Analyst. So today is going to be a little bit different, basically going to be commenting on my own analyst rather than just showing you guys the slides with some background music. So if you prefer this kind of uh, video style, do, do let me know at the comment section. I appreciate it if you provide some feedback so that I can improve my videos in the future. And without further ado, let's get started. So the first slide is going to be the uh, top 10 largest shareholder of the company. Basically, from this slide, what I want to just show is who is the investors for this particular company and whether the directors have uh, skin in the game. So in the case for Mfla, Mr. Tae Wee Chai, which is the uh, director of the company, do have uh, some shares. I mean, he did have some ownership in the company, alright? Sorry for having any starter because I'm, I'm not reading any script. This is all just coming out from my head. Uh, this is a very spontaneous kind of presentation, right? So please bear with me. Okay, so we've moved forward to its revenue to gross profit. Uh, at first glance, the, rev the growth of revenue looks a little bit choppy. And there's ups and downs here and there. You can see that their gross profit has also very little to none to no growth. Basically, you need to take note of this when investing in a company. You want to track how is their performance for the past 10 years, whether is the revenue growing smoothly, uh, what is hindering them from generating revenue or whether is the gross profit, how's the gross profit is performing. Basically what does this tells us is that if the uh, Kager or the compound annual growth rate of gross profit is higher than the Kager of revenue, this shows that the company has econ economies of scale. In the case for Mfla, its revenue has been, like I mentioned just now, it's a little bit choppy because uh, they are affected by a few factors. The first one it is that the industry is very fierce, uh, it's very stiff. Uh, basically, they don't have the control to charge a very high average selling price for their products because if they do, uh, the uh, customer may switch over to its competitors. So who are its competitors? There's actually only three main companies who, does, uh, who do flour miling uh, in Malaysia not in the global scale, it's just Malaysia only. So the first one is definitely Mfla. The second one is PPB. I think you guys uh, know this company because it's quite a huge company actually. Uh, and last but not least, it is the um, Lotus KFM. So out of these three, Mfla is positioned, uh, or oh, sorry, is ranked as the second best, I would say, in Malaysia. The first one is PPB. I did some research on their company and their profit margins, gross margins are all quite steady. They are doing a better performance than definitely than Mfla and also um, Lotus KFM. So for Lotus KFM, it's, it's unfortunately positioned at, at the last because if you look at their profit margin, it's... Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to be very honest, it's very terrible. Uh, yeah, it's very bad profit margin, it's all negative. There's a lot of times that it's in the negatives. I'm not sure how's the management's doing. Um, 
I didn't really further research about it, but it's 10 years financial data, it shows that the company is not re really doing well. Uh. And in the case for Mfla, we shall discover together whether is it a good company or not based on its performance. So you can just pause the video if you want to read through the explanation. But just to sum it up is that Mfla, the sales also has been quite unstable is because of the stiff competition and also they don't have an uh, sustainable average selling price of their products which have lead to little to no growth to its gross profit. Moving on, its operating profit wise is also a similar case to its gross profit. Basically, it's a little bit, it's like a direction, it's like directly proportional together. Uh, when gross profit is improving, operate, operating profit will also improve like, in a way. Like. Oh yeah, just want to share with you guys that uh, Mfly is actually affected by many external risks also. So for example, in the financial year end 2017, but if I'm not mistaken, uh, there is a disease which is the bo uh, body hepatitis disease that actually impacted the production. Basically, once that there's like a bird flu or whatever uh, diseases that has to do with poultry, uh, this will actually impact uh, their business. So this is something that you want to take note of. For its 2020s uh, profit, Operating profit, there's nothing much to comment on is because of the business restriction of business due to MCO. All of his profit margins are... Uh, it actually, it has been growing quite well until uh, the financial year end 2017. Uh, that is for its gross profit margin. But its operating margin, operating profit margin and net profit margin has not been growing that much and as a matter of fact it has actually been slowly declining this shows that their management may not be uh, they are not really managing their operation efficiency that well to uh, justify this statement is because they borrow a lot of loan to spend it on capex capex is basically capital expenditure uh, like for example property plant or equipment things that can assets that can help the company to generate revenue but in the case for Enfla, it doesn't seem to look that way. So it shows, kind of shows like uh, the management is not really uh, operating their uh, business that well. Lah. So uh, its remuneration to profit after tax is also quite concerning. When I say its remuneration to profit after tax, on average, its highest remuneration to PAT is about 31%. And overall, it's about double digit. As you can see, its profit after tax has also not growing that stable. It's like going up and down just like a roller coaster. When a management is paying themselves handsomely, you expect that they will deliver a good result. That's how I see companies when they pay this kind of remuneration. As you can see from financial year end 2011 to 2019, its remuneration has actually been increasing slowly. It's it's also uh in, it's also growing like very choppy, but it's actually increasing quite slowly, slowly on an uptrend basis. Meanwhile, its profit after tax is like going up sideways, like I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, this is something that. I will personally will be quite concerned of. This is something that uh, rare, it interests me a little bit. Interests me a little bit, alright? It is that uh, the company is in the net debt position for 10 years because they are continuously expanding their business locally and overseas. Uh, overseas, I think, is in Indonesia. Uh, but what's concerning is that more than 95% of its total borrowings are actually short term debts. So this means that these are debts that they need to pay off within 12 months. So if you imagine that a company that gets so much of these debts, but uh, if let's say they cannot perform, means they cannot generate much revenue, profit, or uh, operating uh, cash flow, these kind of companies are actually in a very concerning situation, right? Because this is short-term debt, it's not long-term debt. I was expecting a long-term debt. Short-term debts to me is a little bit concerning because they need to pay it off way faster, lah, right? And if let's say they are not delivering a good performance, this may cause them to, I don't know, become like a bad debt or something. So yeah, this is something that I'm also quite uh, worried about the company. Moving forward, it's operating cash flow to Capex. Like I mentioned, in the previous slide, they did get a lot of loan to expand their business. You can see that they actually spent a lot of KPEX during 2011 to 20, 2012 and 2014 to 2019. It's because they've been continuously expanding their manufacturing, packaging and warehousing facilities at Pasir Gudang and Lumut. 
as well as some of the other kind of business acquisition. Uh. If you notice the for the financial year end 2012 and 2014, it, they have a negative operating cash flow. It's because of uh, the increase of inventories and also increase in biological, uh, biological asset. Basically, it shows that the company is not managing their inventories well. It means that they have been accumulating a lot of unsold uh, units, uh, right? And also, uh, one more thing is that there has been a decrease in trade payable. Generally, businesses, you want to have increase in trade payable because if you can extend the trade payable or you can increase your trade payable, it's actually a, a good thing for business. In terms of dividend wise, I, I think it's alright because they have been paying dividend for 10 years consecutively, so it's quite good. But then the growth of dividend is actually uh, unstable over the years. Lah. And if you have a look at the financial year for the 2011, uh, they actually declared a special dividend during that year. And what's interesting is that after they declared a special dividend, means those uh, investors who bought the shares uh, before the X date to get the dividend, it is actually followed by a right issue in, I think it's a uh, few days after they declared the special dividend. So, uh, right issue of 2 to two, 2. So this is a very interesting combination. Generally, how I see right issue is that uh, it shows that even though they get so much of loan, they still need money from the uh, shareholders to expand their business. And at the same time, they are also not really growing their revenue and profit much. So it's like, uh, what? Uh, I, I, uh, I'm not too sure what is the company actually doing, but yep, uh, it's something fishy, that's all I have to say, alright? <laughs> and last but not least, it is the free cash flow, so yep, it makes sense that it's ha the, the company is having a negative free cash flow because of its high spending on capex, they spend a lot of money on buying properties, buying plants, buying equipment to expand their business. But in turn, uh, you can see that they are not really generating a good revenue, profit or operating cash flow just based on the ratios that I showed you in the previous slide. You can watch back again. And how they pay out their dividend is, this is basically what I think, uh, since they don't have much cash on hand, they may use, I think they use their retained earnings, basically is the uh, profit that they reserve in their company, or they use loans to distribute it. So it's either these two that how I see that dividends are paid out. Lah. So in summary, the overall rating for this company I gave is 2.8 out of 8, which is 35%. Not a great company in my own opinion. Um, but if you feel that their business prospect wise has something interesting and you believe that they can deliver a good results, then maybe you can consider investing. But personally, how I see this business for the past, uh, based on its uh, 10 years financial data, it's not so good. And also its business uh, that they are in, the industry that they are in is also very competitive. Unless you take at PPB and M5 and you do some comparison between these two businesses and see whether do, uh, does M5 have like a same kind of business strategy or growing strategy that is similar to PPB then maybe you can consider, uh, then maybe uh, maybe M plus still have a, like a bright future for them. But other than that, uh, personally, I, <laughs> I don't really like this uh, company. Uh, yeah, that's, but this is just based on my own opinion. Uh, you can have your own opinion if that's fair or so. But if you feel that this business prospect is good, why not, right? This is how investing works. Everyone has different tastes in companies, right? Yeah, so uh, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this content, this very spontaneous, out, out of my head kind of a discussion without any script. Uh, if you do, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more of this content. And do let me know if do you like this kind of style or should I go back to my old ways of just showing you guys the slides uh, basically. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.